Adding a new tool to the shop is always exciting and my newest addition is the J JDP 15B drill press. If your shop could use a drill press upgrade, I definitely recommend checking out this one. In this video, I'm going to be doing some unboxing, some assembling, and some testing, so stick around. Part of it is huge and heavy. Let's see. That was the best way to get this out without hurting the tool or myself. You always want to make sure you check the whole box for the contents so you're not forgetting anything like I almost did. Instructions. Hold on. set it up. I removed all the plastic off of all the parts and I cleaned up all the grease that was in there for shipping and I laid everything out on my workbench. So here's everything. We've got our drill press table and we've got the main head unit here with its pulleys are inside. Handles, collar, some various screws and parts that go to the assembly. We've got our chuck and a chuck key, uh, table handle stuff. We've got the base and we've got the column and of course we've got the instruction manual. It looks like everything's here and it looks like it's going to be a pretty simple assembly and simple is my jam. So let's get on it. So I'm going to slide the table over the column and there's a slot in here that's going to fit over this tooth part and it's good that it comes, that it comes with the uh, zip tie here because that holds this in place because this can move but you don't want it to. I wondered if it's supposed to slide down or not. I'm not sure, maybe I missed something. Let me go back to the instructions. All right, so I went back to the instructions and looked at one spot that I missed, and now I know what I was doing wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece back off. The instructions said to use a second person for this. I was like, I don't need a second person, but then I kind of reread what the instructions are. So I'm gonna call in my wife to give me a hand real quick. I didn't show you before, but put this thing in. Thanks, wife. <laughs> all right, so now that we've got that all figured out, I'm gonna take the collar, slide it over, and that's gonna fit into right here. Keep it nice and straight, and I'm gonna tighten the set screw. Okay, so I'm gonna backtrack just one step. I tightened down this collar prematurely, because in the instructions it's talking about the chuck key holder, and I didn't realize that the chuck key holder was this, because I think in the instructions it might already be attached from the factory in the instructions. I'm not sure, but anyways, on the collar, there is another little threaded hole. The chuck key holder goes in that threaded hole because the instructions said to put the chuck key holder in a place that's comfortable and convenient for you. So I was like, what are you talking about? So I think it goes like that. And now I can put it where it's most convenient, which might be right there. If it's not correct, then you'll see me redo it again in a few minutes. But anyway, so now I'm tightening the set screw on the collar. Now we're good to go. See, now this thing should stick. See, now this thing should stick in there like that. That's what I think. Next up is gonna be the handle that we use to raise and lower the table. And this 
Right here is the post that goes on. You'll see it's got a flat side and there's a set screw in the handle. So the set screw fits on the side that's got the flat part. Use the little set screw, tighten it down, and you can see that's how that works. The next step is the column locking handle and the instructions actually have a different handle in the diagram. I think it's called a ratchet lever handle or something, but it comes with this piece instead and it's just easier anyway. You just screw it in. Now this drill press becomes a drill press. Watch. It said team lift, but this time I'm my own team. Once you got this on the column, there's two set screws that I gotta take care of, so I'm just gonna tighten those up. And just like that, we'll move on to the next step. This thing is huge. I was gonna put it over where the other one was, but now I'm looking at the footprint there and I'm looking at the footprint of this thing. I don't know, it might not fit, but I might have to just put French cleats over on that wall behind my wood storage, which is what I wanted to do for a long time. And hang all those templates and jigs and stuff over there. And then maybe this thing will fit. I don't know, more shop projects, I guess. More videos, right? And what's nice about this is I get more travel with this drill press than I did with my other one. So I'm excited about that. That's it as far as the assembly goes. It was really fast, it was really easy to put it together. There's just a few other things that I gotta go over and figure out, and that's gonna be how to do the depth stop, how to adjust and put a new replaceable insert in the table, how to tilt the table, laser adjustment, and then of course the pulley speeds. Um, but I'm kind of excited to plug it in and see how it sounds. Plugged in. It's pretty nice. And it's obviously at a slow speed right now, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to change the pulley speed. Nice big fat paddle switch. So I like it a lot so far. Now I'm gonna get into the other things that we talked about, and uh, I'm gonna show you that now. The drill press table has a replaceable insert, and it came with this one. It's just MDF. It's about three and three quarters inches square, and it looks like it's three quarter inch MDF also. So it just fits right into there, and then we can level it to the surface using a straight edge. Let me show you how you adjust it to make it level. So underneath you'll see there's these, it's got these screws and there's some wing nuts. So what you do is you loosen the wing nuts and you turn these until you'll see on the surface, the insert is either raising or lowering. And once you got it to where you want it, you just tighten these wing nuts on all four corners and you're good to go. Setting the depth on the drill press is also really easy to do. And I'll show you how to do it with this block of wood. Let's say you take this piece of wood and you put it in here. You're gonna bring this down so the drill bit just touches the face of the wood. And then you're gonna set this dial to zero. Move your workpiece out of the way and then go down to the distance you want. So let's say we're drilling a half inch hole. I'm gonna to go to the half inch mark here and I'm gonna turn this locking wheel counterclockwise until it stops. And then I'm gonna tighten the knob. And so now we're good. So if I bring my workpiece back in, you can see that I'm only drilling a half inch hole and this thing automatically stops. You can also adjust the depth by referencing a line on your workpiece and I'll show you how to do that now. If you've already got a mark on your workpiece, you can just bring the drill bit down to that mark. And in this case, you don't need to worry about zeroing out the dial. You can just turn the lock ring counterclockwise until it stops. Then you use the lock knob to tighten that. And now you'll see that it stops at your mark. Another thing that I like about this drill press is the table can tilt from left to right and the specs in the manual say 45 degrees left and 45 degrees right but as I'm looking back on the dial it looks like it goes to 90 left and 90 right. So I'm gonna check that out and I'm gonna adjust it by using the bolts underneath. To adjust the tilt of the table there's two things you got to deal with underneath. One is this pin and that keeps it locked flat. The other is this nut and you loosen that which allows you to tilt the table. This is the locking pin, and then you loosen this. So it comes with this tool. It's got a nice magnet on there, so you can just clip it underneath wherever, and it's out of the way. 
but I think I would recommend just using a half inch socket for the retaining pin and a 15 16 socket for the tilting adjustment bolt. Uh, this is a little uncomfortable in the hand and it's just easier that way. So let me grab a piece of wood and I'm gonna drill a test hole at an angle. I've got the table tilted to 45 degrees and I've got a drill bit in the chuck and I've got a piece of wood. One thing I like about this table is that the slots in here can take either your standard T-slot hold downs if you have those, or if you have something like the Festool clamps, the slot accepts those really easily. So I'm gonna lock this piece of wood in right where I want it for this test. And it's also got the slots in here so you can put in the clamps this way and lock those down here. But I'm gonna fire it up. That's a freaking crooked bit, Rockler, crooked bit. All right, so I switched out a bit to one that's not crooked and we're gonna drill our first hole at an angle. The first bits of sawdust on the new drill press, success. My hole that I drilled, success. And of course, depending on the drill bit you're using, you're gonna to wanna to change your belt speed and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So up here under the hood, we've got our belts and our pulleys and we've got a chart that's got all the recommended speeds and pulley configurations for the different bits you might be using. So changing the belts is pretty easy. Just using the tensioning knob, you loosen it and it moves out of the way and that allows you to move the belts to the configuration that you need. The light switch is located on the front of the drill press. It's a nice bright LED and it really illuminates the work surface. The laser switch is also on the front of the drill press. And if you need to make any adjustments to align the crosshairs, you can dial it in by rotating each beam with a set of pliers. Another cool feature about the drill press is that you can lock the spindle in the downward position and that's good for a couple reasons. One reason is if you don't have a spindle sander, you can use these little drum sanding bits and put them in the chuck in place of a drill bit. You can bring the spindle down to how far you want it, turn the locking ring all the way clockwise till it stops and lock the spindle handle and then you've got yourself a little spindle sander. The other reason you'd want to leave this in the down position is so that you can remove the chuck and to do that you use this little wedge tool that they gave you you'll see a slotted hole in the side and it goes right in there. So that's a general overview of the assembly and the features of the JDP 15B drill press. It's got three quarter horsepower, over three inches of spindle travel. It's got 16 speeds and it's got cast iron everything. So as you can tell, it's a pretty good upgrade from what I was using. So I'm looking forward to putting this thing to work for many, many years in my shop. I know I'm gonna love it. Another quality tool from Jet. So I hope you liked the video and found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you guys. So I'll have links in the description below to all the tools that I use when I'm using the drill press. Also make sure you check out my other videos and be sure to follow me on Instagram. Until next time, everybody, I will see you later.